you guys got these hits and things are moving fast for you. At what point does Tupac come into the picture? Um, Tupac came along. Well, Tupac actually was signed to the same label we were signed to. He's just in another group. And then, you know, at whatever point, their, their group dissolved. And, you know, H. and Gregory, who was the manager of both of the, the groups, he was, the, he was Tupac's manager and he was his running around the manager. And we were all signed to TNT Records. And he just asked if we could kind of merge or let Tupac merge into our group until he could find him his own solo deal. And that's kind of how it worked. But even before that, we knew Pac. He had been around since I had been around, honestly. Oh, okay. So Tupac was around. He knew everybody already. So it yeah. wasn't it wasn't like a big get to know or process. It was, oh yeah, that's the homie. Right. Well, what was Shock G like during those early years? He's just creative, you know, and he had all these bright, great, innovative new ideas that some sound crazy and some sound crazier, you know, but we we just believed in it and we trusted it and we just, you know, we went with it. Was Shock G like the main one that was doing the creativity, like the song ideas? For Digital Underground, he, he was the basis of most of, of the concepts. You know, we all had ideas and different samples or things that we wanted to try and he was open to hear all of it but yeah for the most part it was a lot of his original ideas and at one point did he create Humpty Hump um I think you know he probably had the idea but the first time Humpty Hump was introduced to the world was in the do what you like video and I don't even think he had a name at that time but it was just this character that he wanted to to introduce and everybody loved it. At some point, you know, working on the album, it was suggested that, uh, I don't know if it was suggested or he came up with the idea, like, let's give Humpty his own song. And the Humpty Dance came out of it. It's dope. I mean, I, you know, I was young at the time, but it don't seem like there was a lot of hip hop guys playing characters at the time. It was kind of, yeah, it kind was, of different. It, it was a new idea, right? Yeah, that, that didn't exist really. So yeah. that's what had people tripping out because they're like, "Wait a minute!" And people didn't know if it was one person or two, two people, and we kind of helped play that out. Created some, con you know, con I don't want to say controversy. I don't know if that's the right word for yeah. it, but you know, just kind of got people talking. Exactly. Yeah, because I remember I was a kid and, and I didn't. You know, I didn't quite know the difference, you know. You know, I was didn't have access to the magazines and I wasn't reading the magazines like I was when I got older, but, right. you know, I'm, I feel lucky that I grew up in the time where, you know, I got to see the 90s hip hop, you know, versus... Yeah, you got to catch it. Yeah, versus like some of the other eras. Okay, so now, you know, you guys are blowing up. You know, Tupac is part of the group. You know, did you guys see Tupac as, as the star that he actually became from the beginning? Mm, I don't know that we saw him as the star. We saw the potential of him becoming a star. Um, not to the degree that he became, obviously. You know, you don't look at somebody and be like, they're going to become a global icon, right? You just know that that person is dope or he has the potential to, to be a star, right? And I think all of us kind of saw that at some point early in his career. What was he like back then? Wild, he just you know he was, <laughs> he was wild. He was determined. He was focused. He was he just you know and he had a he had a drive and he was just a person that was not going to be denied or told no to the, the things that he wanted. He wasn't going to accept no, I should say. Okay, so Tupac is you know he's this hungry dude. He's young. You know, you guys see potential in him, and you guys put him on the same song, and that, it does good. What was his reaction with everything that was going on? I mean, when we put him on the song, he was excited. That was his first, you know, real record. That's when, that was his first record that people, you know, that the world got to hear him. So, you know, his goal, just like all of ours, was to put out some music and actually make a record. And that was his first record. So obviously he was, he was excited. He got to go go back to his neighborhood and be like, I, I made it. You know, he'd already been on tour with us, but then to actually be on a record with us, 
you know, that was, that was the beginning of everything for him. So he was excited, but he, he but at the same time, he wasn't satisfied with just that. Were you doing anything solo at the time, or were you trying to be solo, a solo artist, or you were you just all about the group? Uh, me and DJ Fuse, remember, we were a group before we joined Digital, and so the whole thing was, you know, Digital Underground was more like a big production company, a big, big production team, I should say. So we all had, so even when Tupac was in the group, it was all with the purpose of getting him seen and then getting him a deal. Same with me and Fuse. You know, rock with me. This is Shock saying rock with me, and then I'll do everything I can, and him and Atron, to help us secure a deal for ourselves so we could do our own music. You'd mentioned the tour. I think this is the tour that everybody believes Tupac was a backup dancer on. Right. Okay. Can you, can you explain to everybody what was going on with that? Well, we brought Pac out, and his, his role on the tour was just to do what was necessary. So... He did, you know, he, he he did do some dancing, but when he danced, I danced. He never danced without me, so we did the same amount of dancing. Um, but he also would get the mic and be able to bust and, and get off, and he would do some backup parts, and he would have some solo parts where he could, you know, where he was front and center on stage. And when the show was over, you know, he, he was part of the, the, the crew that would break equipment down, but we all did at some point. So, you know, as the newest member, that was the, that was the, the way things worked, you know? But we didn't call him, he wasn't our roadie, per se. He just had responsibilities. We all had responsibilities. What do you think was like the wildest time you had? The wildest time? Probably one time in, in Minnesota. We just, it was just, a, the people were really excited to see us, and we just hung out in this hotel, and it was just crazy how excited they were to see us. And then I think later that night, um, we got to go to like this after, after party, which was supposedly Prince's after party, we never saw Prince, but it was supposedly his party. So, you know, we got that Minneapolis experience one time. Was Tupac rapping at all during those times? You know, after after shows, Tupac would be freestyling in the lobby and battling all the local rappers, him and MC Search. Oh, okay. What was that like for him? Was that just a... Uh... Well, he just had a, you know, he had a talent to freestyle, so... And he loved, he loved to rap. So, you know, Shock would get on the piano and Pac and Search would just start rocking and whoever pulled up, they was gonna get the business. There's no videos of none of this? Maybe if somebody had a VHS, VHS, VHS camera. Damn, that'd be classic. That would be dope. You don't remember if anybody did? Just seeing I mean, some random? We didn't carry a VHS camera. Man, that would be dope. 